What's going on guys? Me and Andrew out here. It's my birthday today. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. But uh, I got a little footage for you. So someone actually contacted me like last night about their fuel pump going out or they're, they're having some fuel issues or whatnot. Long story short, basically we were going to film a video for you guys for my birthday. And in the meantime of me driving the drift car to, to, to the secret spot, um, I basically swung the car around, the car stalled out, and it wouldn't start again. We checked everything, the coil packs, uh, basically everything. The battery, we checked some wiring and electrical yeah, electrical gremlins. We checked everything out and basically it, it, we couldn't figure it out. So we think that I st when I swung the car around, maybe I didn't have enough gas and I starved the fuel pump. So what we're going to do today is actually swap my fuel pump to a Walboro fuel pump. So Robbie hooked me up with this Walboro fuel pump here. So this is what they look like. Uh, a stock one will not look like this. A stock one looks definitely different and it's much bigger and like fatter, um, but it doesn't look like this. Cause when I first actually thought I had an issue before, I tried to swap it out and then I actually had a Walboro in here already. And I was like, what the heck? And then the guys were like, that can't be your problem. That's not your problem, this and that. Um, this was like two years ago because Walboros are like not known to fail. So uh, I was like, okay, like, I mean, whatever. And then I figured it out and I, I think it was just uh, a bad uh, coil pack connector. But like I said, I went back, we went back the other day, checked everything and it wasn't that. The car powers up everything. It just, it sounds like it wants to crank over, but it's, it's just not getting fuel because we pulled off the line off the fuel filter to see and it wasn't spitting any fuel out. So um, that's why we kind of went this route, so. Let's check it out. So short and sweet in a two plus two, it's a little bit different than a two plus O, um, but in a two plus two, all we got to do is go in here and we got to get these four Phillips head screws out and then we'll take this out. After taking out those four Phillips screws, what you're going to do is disconnect this connector and then we have two lines here. So uh, basically what we're going to have to do is unscrew this, slide this line off and then undo this line also and then slide it off. This one is a pain to get on and off. Uh, just be forewarned. What you're gonna do is you're gonna see these little bolts around here where you're gonna go around and unscrew all these bolts. I'm pretty sure they're eight millimeter bolts. So you're just gonna go around and make sure you get all of them off. And then you're basically what you're gonna be able to do is take this whole head here and pop it off. When you do pop it off, there is like a uh, seal, like an O-ring. So just make sure you don't lose that O-ring into the tank. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yay. Give me the mic so I can take it away. Okay guys, so I got all the bolts out. You want to make sure that you keep stuff away from the tank too, so nothing's going to fall into the tank. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to start grabbing this and you're going to kind of fish it out. You don't want to pull too hard because how it sits, it go, basically it goes down into and there's like a hook part. And that hook part is basically like into, the, it reaches the bottom of the tank. So if you pull out too hard, you can like mess something up. So you want to go real slow, try to remember how these lines were running too because you're gonna have to put it back in that way and you kind of just fish it out it's not easy as you can see all that contraption in there this lefty bitch oh there we go there we go Got her. So you guys want to look in that tank. You guys can see in that tank. Let me grab this. So it looks pretty rusty. What do you think? Yeah. It's pretty low too, huh? Yeah, it's really low. Yeah. All right. Well. Okay. So I'm low on gas. So I probably starved the uh, fuel pump, as you can see, even if by this, look, this isn't even wet. <laughs> the protective part on the wall bro isn't even wet. So yeah, probably starved it. This is the mechanism that tells you how much gas you have. So I've, obviously if it goes up, that's full, empty, and this isn't even wet. <laughs> so yeah, this isn't even wet either. That's crazy. So I was running the car. Basically what happened was I was running the car with little to no gas um we did get gas a few times like a few weeks ago but every time i would just idle to let the car idle and stuff that's probably just ran out of gas oh i'm such an idiot thank you robbie though for the hookup so i think that this is what the problem is so we're going to take this apart we're all it's pretty simple if you look down here it's pretty simple all we're going to do is unclip this from the wall burrow take this off basically 
just swap all these parts over to our new Walboro right here. It's pretty simple. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And we're gonna do that first clamp off. Take that clamp off. And now we're gonna go to the clip here. And I saw Robbie kind of mess with this, and it, it wasn't that it didn't come out that easy. Yeah, so it's flathead. Yes. Okay, so we're obviously that's all reused and such. And then this clamp just kind of this clamp doesn't really do anything because this is for the OEM clamp or the OEM pump. So this kind of you just slide it on here and it just kind of holds this in place. It doesn't really do anything, but take that off, slide that down, and cut on the sleeve there. And then, just twist it right off. Twist it right off. So that's our, our fuel pump. So now what we need to do is get this guy off. The little washer on the bottom here. Yep. And that'll pop right off. We'll put it right on the new one. Yep. And then we'll use this sleeve too, because this sleeve just protects that outer casing for the fuel pump. Okay, guys. So Andrew basically went through, took that little clip off. Took this off the old one and then uh, basically just reverse the step. So you put this on first, then you put that clip on and make sure it stays in there. And we got everything back on to the new uh, fuel pump. So now, just reverse the steps. So we're going to go in. Slip that bad boy right on there. Then we're going to plug her in. I think we had her plugged in like that, right? Yep, outside. Uh, yeah, clip. outside. Oh yeah, she's yeah, she's a tough one. Uh, make sure it clicks and she'll be good. Yeah, I don't think it clicked, but she's locked in though. Yeah, yeah she's once locked you in. see once you see that little fucking pin in there holding it, yep. you're good. And then another good thing too is to always double check on your pump. You'll see a plus sign and a minus sign. Red is always positive. Well, in this case, so positive, positive. So we're good. Fix this sleeve a little bit. Okay, so now we have this. We're gonna go back to our clamp. Sorry, I've been drinking. Get in there nice and deep black. You drink the booze, you lose, kids. <laughs> okay. So now, there. Hose clamp's on. That's on. We're going to take our cool little circle piece here slide around here and then like I said this doesn't really do anything for us I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be like this yeah, and then it, this well, clips on that around. but with this setup I don't know if that works entirely yeah, the factory room probably sits higher <laughs> but we can try to make some work here So good to go, good to go. All plugged in, this and that. So now Robbie said, um, before we bolt anything down, what we wanna do is try to test if uh, this is gonna prime. So this, by it priming, meaning we're gonna try to uh, just turn the accessory power on the car with it plugged in and go from there. So we're gonna try that real first to see if it, you hear if we hear it prime. If it primes, we should be good because the last one, when we tried to turn the car on accessory, it did not prime at all. It was dead silent. So that's what we're gonna do now. Action. And now it's just back into that game of playing how to get this back in. There we go. Shimmy right in. Boom. Beautiful. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to plug this in. We're going to put a little bit of gas in here just so we make sure that we don't starve this pump too. And then we're going to turn on an accessory and see if it sucks something up. You'll be able to hear it. Fill her up, boo. It's 
probably like a bad connection, a faulty ground. All right, guys, so we're in front of the car. Basically, this is my ignition here. My kill switch is turned off, and basically, if this goes, you can hear the relay click. But basically, that, so the problem is now, so we replace the pump. Usually, you would hear like a, and like, that's what you would hear in the back. That's every single time I started this car, that's what you would hear. Now it's not doing that. So now Andrew's thinking that it might be something with this harness back here. Either that or we don't have enough power to get it going. Yeah. Andrew thinks right now is that it it could be that this, this wire here or this line here that runs here has like a short somewhere. But we're thinking that it could be that. It could be because my battery is like dead. So, um... It could be a numer uh, numerous things, but now we just got to kind of check everything off. Um, I so we replaced the water pump, so we know it's or the fuel pump. So now we know it's not the fuel pump. Now there's this fuse here or relay here that I swapped out the other day. That it could be that, and then there's also a relay under. <laughs> it would under so basically it would be under your guys's hood here. Um, it would be under your hood here, but basically I relocated it. So mine is under here. So in that fuse box, there's also another fuel relay in there. So, um, thankfully I have a couple of relays that I have laying around. So I'm going to swap them out and check it out. All I can really do is just go around and test out the relays and see what we can do see if we're getting power to one and not another or if there is like a grounding issue so i got a little bit of work to do all right guys so it's been a couple days since our last recording uh trying to figure out exactly what's going on so i had robbie come over and uh basically we were checking everything out we wanted to see exactly uh what the issue was with this whole fuel pump situation so the first thing that we did is I had Robbie come in here. Robbie was testing power um, from the actual relay here. He was testing power. We were getting power to the relay because also when we turned on ignition, you would hear it click twice like it usually does. But the fuel pump wasn't priming. So that was one issue. So we're like, okay, well then it's got something to do within this wiring harness here that goes to the FPCU. We disconnected the FPCU. We we're testing power to the actual plug we were get getting power to the plug so that was a good thing so we're like okay so now all this should be okay so then after going from there uh basically he was like all right well we're gonna check some wires back here and we're gonna check the power wire which is this orange wire and he's like we're gonna see if uh if you're getting any power beyond that plug back here so what we did is we spliced into this and we were testing it and we weren't getting power. It was really weird. Sometimes we'd get power, sometimes we wouldn't. So coming back today, me and Andrew were like, all right, let's go back to what Robbie was doing and let's test to see if we were getting power from this wire or not. Because our plan was, was to just delete this whole entire wire to the plug. And what we were gonna do is run from the plug, uh, a power wire from the plug and then run it back to here all brand new. But we found out that that wasn't the issue because when i was in here with my test light here for some reason today the relay wasn't clicking on so we're like okay well like why isn't that clicking on now it was clicking on perfectly fine i have three spare relays there's two over there so i was like it, it's not the relays because i tried all three of them and now they're all not working and it doesn't make sense so um we did a little bit of research on uh twinturbo.net and someone it, thank you for whoever you are but basically they were like they were they have the same exact problem where they weren't getting power to the pump but they were getting power to the relay and it wasn't because the computer because my computer is fine i tested it in this and it's perfectly fine so the problem is is uh so we we went over and he said well check your ecu connections so i went over checked the ecu connections and now you got to remember it is a drift car so the car is always going like from side to side and like there's a lot of transitioning and a lot of movement. Well, how I had this bolted up, it became loose from up here and uh, 
possibly like when I was looking at the ECU, like when I was taking it off, you could actually see that this part of the ECU was kind of like tilted upward and that, um, or actually it was this side. This side was like kind of tilted upward a little bit. So as I was taking it off, I was like, hmm, it's not sitting flush anymore like it used to. So that's weird. So when I bolted it back down, I like I checked the connectors, everything looked clean. When I actually went back in and tried to bolt this back down, then this side didn't want to go down and in. It sounded kind of like crunchy. So um, I cleaned all that up again, and now everything slid down, and it's nice and fine. It's nice and tight. So we checked that. That was the uh, second thing that we did today. Then it was really weird. It was just like a eureka moment. Andrew's in the back. He wired everything up. Well, I'll show you how we wired everything to bypass the FPCU because a lot of people said that that was going to be the issue. But I was in here, and I'm messing with. I was messing with this. So I'll, I'll take this out of the way if I can get it out of here now. Stuffed her in there pretty good. Okay. So, this module here, this is your fuel pump relay. When I had this out like this, because I was testing, so I kept unplugging it, plugging it back in to see if we're getting power or not, this and that. Um, we were getting power sometimes, sometimes we weren't getting power, so I, Andrew's like, all right, dude, like, like, let's, like, let's look into this harness more. This harness runs up and around this fuse panel here and runs back down and under. So if you could see, this is our orange power wire that runs to the actual uh, fuel pump assembly and FPCU, or FCP, or F, yeah, FPCU. Um, and then this harness runs into here, down here and along. So we're looking at everything and I was like, okay. So I started messing with this a little bit. I started messing with this a little bit. And then I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna plug it back in and see what happens. So I turned my, uh, Ignition on. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It works. So I turned my ignition on and everything primed and the f relay clicked. And I was like, huh. Andrew's like, yo, shut it off, shut it off. It's spinning fuel. So I was like, okay. So I shut it off. I shut it off and I was like, that's crazy. But when I did that, I actually had it in my hand. So then when I laid it down like this, he's like, try it again. I tried it again. It didn't work something it like the, it the relay didn't click on and it didn't prime so i was like hmm andrew i was like weird i was like i'm gonna try one more time with this in my hand you stay back there if you, see if you can hear it i had this in my hand like no joke just like this and it primed and the relay clicked and i was like no way so andrew's thinking now it possibly could have been the ecu connection because like i said it was kind of it wasn't flush in all that transitions could have caused an issue like with it coming unplugged but also he said that with working electrical that wires like wires that are sitting for a long time in a certain scenario can kind of like pinch themselves off and uh this probably sitting here for like 20 years like this and me like not stretching it out or I mean like whatever like something could have just happened where the wire just it just sat wrong for a long bit of time and it stopped working so I no joke took this out kind of just moved it around kind of did my thing with it and uh, it works every single time now every time crazy crazy <laughs> what? What? we've been losing our minds for at least a couple weeks look at like look <laughs> like absolutely crazy stuff guys like I, I don't get it so I'm gonna show you exactly what we did now to run our fuel pump. This is our Wallboro fuel pump swap, I would say, because it's not really like a conversion because it was already converted beforehand. But basically, this is what we did. This is what we found out. So now I have done nothing extra to this besides cut some loom back in just to give it a little bit more room, okay? I cleaned out the connectors and we kind of like messed with the connector on the ECU to have it properly sit. It sits flush now, okay. Now we're going back into our wonderful mess here with our FPCU. So your FPCU is gonna sit here like this, okay? This connector connects into that FPCU. These are your power wires and your grounds. So I'm gonna show you what we did with the grounds first. The grounds are actually con conjunct with each other here. So it's a black and a white wire. They come in together of this black wire coming back from the harness here that's like hooked up here we de-loomed everything this black wire here okay so what we did is we snipped these two and because they were in 
conjunction with each other, like kind of higher up. All we did was put a butt connector with an eyelet here and attach it to this ground, the OEM ground here already. Okay. So that's all grounded out. Pretty simple for the ground. The power wires were pretty crazy. So running from here, as you're looking at the female plug, you're going to follow these wires. These wires actually come in conjunction to here in the loom. So it, for some reason, there's like three wires all connected to this connector here. Um, so I think basically what Andrew was saying was that uh, one is supplying power to the actual FPCU and then one's supplying power to the fuel pump. So it tees off there. So this line actually here is from the fuel pump re or the, the relay. Yeah, the fuel pump relay here coming through the harness down along the frame rail. So we got that connected. That's all good to go. All we did was snip off one of the T's. We just snipped off the T's from here, from the the actual uh, connector here. We haven't found out yet what we're going to be doing with these, but for right now, we have technically this harness grounded, and it has supplies its power. This power wire goes all the way back. It's already connected. It's gonna run back through the loom up over there, but since we got it deloomed, it's over there, but it runs up through here, comes through here. This is your big orange wire, and it goes straight to your connector. And that's that. So this fix is basically for a non-pump start, basically. Like the pump wasn't priming, the pump wasn't running, it didn't wanna suck in any gas, it was just acting up for some odd reason. And all I did was a 180 turn and the car shut down, stalled on me, and that was it. The relay was clicking on at that time, but the pump was not priming. So long story short, the fuel pump primes and runs now as it should. And it's probably because one of those wires down there had an issue or the ECU just was unplugged a little bit. Um, so if you guys have this issue, that's what the first thing I would do is unplug the ECU, clean up the connectors, make sure it sits flush together bolt it back up and then from there I would go to this harness over here take it actually out like this kind of straighten out the wires a little bit okay and then you want to go and delete this uh, FPCU so this computer is just basically for fuel command um, there have been a lot of faulty issues with this and it's pretty simple all you'd have to do instead of what we did just to the fact that because we we were trying to figure out if it if, if this wiring was dead. All you guys would have to do, if everything's working as normal and you guys want to delete this, and um, the proper way to run a Walboro is by deleting this. Um, what you're going to have to do is literally ground these two wires out. So to this spot right here, you, you're going to ground the white wire out to this ground. And then these power wires are going to just stay connected up here so those would stay teed and then the ground would just be ground and you ground that out and once you ground that out to the firewall you can just leave this plug out like this and you can delete this and you don't need to worry about anything else when you're running your wall bro uh concept c performance has a whole entire write-up on how to do it very simply so you could just follow that uh right up but this is what we did um, just the fact that it is a drift car. So we're trying to, I mean, like I said, clean up things as much as possible anyways. So, but this is what fixed our problem and we're gonna run with it until something else happens. I've been stressing out so much about this car because this car like has not given me any problems in four years. It hasn't given me one problem. I mean, I might've had like a, like a battery draw here and there, like my battery dies here and there sometimes. So I have a probably a draw somewhere. But besides that, like, I've never had an issue. The cars run, the cars performed, never had any problems. We just did all this work to the motor on the drift car and it's been, it was running perfect until this whole situation. So I'm so happy and so thankful that me and this dude figured this out. And I'm happy that this dude just comes in and just starts getting to work. Cause he's like, dude, I know we, we got this. We're going to figure it out. So, but I'm so happy. You guys can't even understand. I've been stressing out. I haven't been able to sleep. I've been waking up at 3 a.m. about this freaking crap. So I'm pumped. And hopefully 
I might be able to get a burn off for you if I go get some gas because I'm kind of low on gas and I don't want to start the pump because this is a new Walboro. So <laughs> that being said, I got to get back and help Andrew figure or finish up this job now because we got to clean up all that wiring. We don't want any stray wiring hanging around, especially in a drift car because obviously something ha will happen. If you guys haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button up here. If you guys want to see any drifting videos or any DIY videos on our new build that we're building, check it out here. See you guys in the next one. Peace.